Hello and welcome to Political Capital. I'm Karabole Tata. We are coming to you from Orlando West in Soweto, where South Africa is coming to terms with the passing of its mother. Nomzamo Wini Matikizela Mandela was a force and a liberation struggle icon. The country has gathered here outside her home to sing songs of praise and mourn her passing and also remember her contribution to South Africa's liberation. And as you can imagine, the papers were full of it. Well, most of the newspapers across Africa are filling the front page with the Winnie Medikizela Mandela story. Winnie Medikizela Mandela was a candle in the wind, says the Sowetan. When a person dies, you get people talking, how did she or he die? But with Mama Winnie Madikizela Mandela, the question should be, how did she live? She was a baobab tree among the women of the world, so says former cabinet minister Tokyo Sikwali. Hashtag Winnie Mandela, we must never forget her sacrifices, so says independent newspapers. Not even the father of our democracy, Nelson Mandela, had to go through what she did. The threats, the detention without trial, the torture and the trumped-up charges. But not once. Did she flinch? Now to the uh, fraught subject of state-owned enterprises we tackled on political capital many times. ESCOM rolls out plan to tackle bloated workforce in Fin24. The power utility seen by Goldman Sachs as the biggest single risk to the South African economy employed about 47,600 people as of March last year, compared with 32,600 a decade ago. A bloated workforce means high costs for a company struggling with cash flow. And finally, uh, to Zimbabwe and the Zimbabwe Independent is reporting Air Zimbabwe scandal deepens. The dodgy project involving Air Zimbabwe and new airline Zimbabwe Airways is getting murkier amid allegations that some senior government officials are deliberately sabotaging the debt-ridden national flag carrier to pave the way for the new private airline, which will also be emblazoned with national colours. But with the end of this week's newspapers, back to the Winnie Mandela story. Winnie Mandela, how should she be remembered? I think that uh, she has been larger than life when it comes to her contribution to South Africa's uh, anti-apartheid movement. Uh, she has actually made uh, personal sacrifices towards that. I mean, she was removed from her husband, Nelson Mandela, for about 27 years. What that means is what she always repeats, that uh, actually she has never had a normal life. But over and above that, she was actually tortured by apartheid system to a point where she got very much hardened by the system, uh, apartheid system to a point where uh, you can say that uh, she wanted to use, it was by any means necessary to defeat apartheid system. So she comes from there, but I also think there is part of a history that is uh, being narrated in the post-apartheid South Africa that is quite interesting, that is quite controversial. We know that she has been convicted of fraud. We know that uh, she has been isolated from the ANC since 1996. There were trials around 1996 where I think uh, they involved the men and she will relate to the NC until when she passed. So she's been isolated from the NC under President Tabombeki. She also got isolated from the NC under President Jacob Zuma. However, she began speaking against uh, the NC that she thought has gone astray. She began speaking about the NC having betrayed some aspects of the revolution. So I think that in the last few years of her lives, she had actually been elevated much higher as a, as a voice of reason, as someone who has got a moral authority to speak on the ANC where things go wrong. So uh, I think that she has a very interesting, colorful, controversial legacy and I do think she has got a, a very remarkable space in South Africa's history. You cannot tell the history of the liberation movement in South Africa without talking about her, irrespective of where you come from. There are those who don't like her, there are those who hate her within South 
South Africa who actually had seen her as a terrorist until the end. But there are those who actually love her so much that they believe that some of the uh, misdemeanor, some of the problems she was involved in, in post-apartheid, all this could be connected to the hard times and the hard life she has experienced under apartheid. Mm. So uh, there is no one who is disinterested in Winnie Madixella Mandela. You either love her so much or you hate her so much. Ralph, did she get a raw deal from the African National Congress considering that she was almost a symbol? She had to carry the struggle once her husband went to jail. Mm -hmm. So for 27 years, Winnie never left this country. She never went to exile. She carried the struggle internally. Did she get a raw deal for what she had sacrificed for this movement? Was she properly honored? Was she properly respected for the role that she had played? Not entirely, but I also think that uh, it's not because some people had deliberate intentions to avoid her. South Africa was going through the transition to South Africa uh, as democracy has actually had people saying it should not have gone that way. It was too conciliatory. And remember during the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, she came out as saying that some people could not be forgiven for their atrocities because they are not actually, they have not fully owned up to that. And she also felt that uh, some of the liberation anti-apartheid uh, liberation fighters, including her, were actually castigated under the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. So uh, one word or another, she found herself at the crossroads where the NC in the immediate post-apartheid dispensation had to decide as to where the country ought to go. The country went the uh, market-oriented approach she did not favor that and I think that a choice was made by then uh, that uh, maybe people such as Winnie Mandela will cause problems if they would remain at the center of the NC in the immediate uh, post uh, liberation uh, time so I do think that uh, history uh, has treated her in a very interesting manner but I do think as well that uh, as much as she might have not been fully respected or been given sufficient space to influence the post-apartheid South Africa. Some of the things she had said about where the NC was going had become quite prophetic about the NC losing touch with the people and about the proliferation of corruption within the NC, which got the party very distant from what you can call historical mandate to implement uh, uh, revolutionary, you can say, principles that uh, Winnie Mandela and others were actually known for. So. Uh, it is a complex journey that she had experienced, but I do think in the last few years, two or so years uh, before she passed, it was becoming very clear that she did indeed represent a voice of reason. Even people went back to some of the things she said in the past about where the country was going. The sudden and unexpected passing of Nomzamo Winifred Mandela caught many leaders unawares and evoked lots of emotions starting with the President of the Republic, Cyril Ramaphosa. The nation was ill-prepared for her early departure and people are grieving very, very deeply. The death of uh, Winnie Matikizela Mandela is a great loss in that she has been one of the strongest women in our struggle who suffered immensely under the apartheid regime, who was imprisoned, who was banished, who was treated very badly, separated not only from her husband but from her children as well and her people. But notwithstanding all this, she remained strong, she remained determined, she was courageous, and in many ways, she was also very stubborn. Stubborn on behalf of our people because she knew that out of her stubborn disposition, she would be able to inspire millions of South Africans. And she inspired millions of us. We grew up watching how she was conducting herself as she resisted the worst type of terrible torture from the apartheid regime. She was not only an inspiration, but she also touched the lives of many millions of South Africans 
during the dark days of apartheid, when the ANC was banned, when our people were living under the jackboot of apartheid, she remained the sole voice of the democratic movement. She continued to show courage against all the terrible forms of intimidation that was leveled against her and her movement. Her movement remembers her very fondly as she was one of those gallant leaders that our movement has had. So she's one person who really went through a lot of tribulations. If there's anyone who suffered, who suffered as much as Nelson Mandela did, she did outside prison. She suffered immensely and today her departure is a real loss. You can hear the people singing and this will go on through the night, through the week as we prepare to lay her to rest. So we as South Africans are all in mourning right across the nation and Winnie Mandela in many ways was also a unifier. She had this great ability of uniting so many South Africans across the color line and across the political line as well. Also, she was able to unite urban and rural. Having been born in the rural areas of our country, she was able to represent the views and the aspirations of both the rural people as well as the urban people, oppressed people in our country. So she is a great loss. It is going to be very difficult for the nation to really sustain itself until we bury her. There's going to be a lot of heartache throughout the nation. Internationally as well, Winnie Mandela had a great impact on the African continent. She's fondly remembered as a very gallant and brave person. And in the international arena, she's also greatly remembered by many people in the anti-apartheid movement. President Cyril Ramaphosa announced here yesterday that Winnie Madikizela Mandela will be afforded a state funeral at her hometown of Bizana in the Eastern Cape. But just how do you wrap and sum up the life of Winnie Mandela? Chris Bishop gives it a bash. Winnie Madikizela Mandela. They called her the mother of the nation and a feisty, flinty matriarch she was. Right into her 80s, she exuded the energy of a powerful woman with a strong voice in the post-liberation politics of South Africa, the direction of which she often disagreed with, according to those close to her in the latter days of President Jacob Zuma. Her activism started when she was a young social worker in South Africa's Eastern Cape. It intensified when she married the future first black president of the country, Nelson Mandela, in 1958. It led to her spending 491 days in solitary confinement amid violence, desperation and abuse. This undoubtedly steeled and hardened her for what was going to be a tough life in politics. Many attribute her later tarnishing links with grimy violence in the townships to this harrowing incarceration. She stuck by her husband in prison, sickness and health. The couple divorced in 1996, yet it was Madikizela Mandela who was at Madiba's bedside when he died in 2013. Family was always important to her. It was fitting that her family surrounded her in hospital when she succumbed in the early hours of Monday morning in Johannesburg. Chris Bishop, CNBC Africa. One year on since the passing of another stalwart in Ahmed Katrada, we sit down with two ministers in Derek Hanakom and Praveen Godan as they discuss that legacy after the break.